Where's my morning kit? I wish I had that growing up. I grew up in a small town. A little girl from Latvia shooting with Marc Jacobs. It was incredible. Would you ever let your children start modeling at such a young age? People would love to dress me into Marilyn Monroe. Most unpleasant thing about being a model? I used to be in art school, so that's just like a little thing about me. Why do models walk so serious on the runway? It's completely changed my life. This is the moment where people start recognizing me on the streets. I mean, it was wild. I'm very proud of this, I have to say. Oh my God! They come to my room. Let's go check it out. What kind of skeletons do I have in my closet? Hi, good morning, welcome to my house. So today I'm gonna take you with me and uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of time in my house, my morning routine um, with me, my husband and Axel. And then uh, we're gonna go to my storage unit. We're gonna dig up some amazing work from modeling years. I actually haven't been there in a while, so it's gonna be interesting for me too. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna talk and I'm gonna do some Q and A's. So why won't we start with matcha? Who knows me knows that I'm, I don't drink coffee. I just never liked the taste of it, uh, but I love matcha. Yeah, so I keep my matcha in this cute little jar that I got for my birthday. It's really adorable, keeps it fresh. And it has this cute little spoon. So the matcha I'm drinking right now is coconut infused matcha. It's, it's kind of good, a little bit sweet, but I don't mind it sometimes. Uh, then we take this, this ball, pour it in. I think this part is all coconut. You could technically put it with matcha, but I like very light coconut flavor, so I'm gonna keep it like this. Then I take almond milk and we're gonna foam it up. Just pour it in a little bit. Press the button. And in the meantime, we can pour our hot water into matcha. And just mix it. I remember first time I tried matcha and I was like, I just fell in love with it. I just think taste is so good and I guess I'm the only person on the planet who doesn't, doesn't drink coffee in the mornings. While milk is getting ready, we pour this in a glass. Usually it gets more foamier, but this is fine. So Axel is not sleeping in the crib anymore. And so when he wakes up, he's on a loose. Let's see where he is. Hi! Dude! <laughs> he got shot. Where's my morning kiss? How did you sleep? Good. Yeah? I slept in my room. You slept in your room? Say, come to my room. Skalyak, come to my room. What is, what is here? Actually, right? This is actually his little room. I chose animal motifs because ever since I got pregnant, I was like, I know for a fact I want my kid to be animal lover. And uh, he for sure is one. You love animals, huh? So, yeah. what's your favorite? Elephant. Elephant. Yeah, I love elephants too. Yeah. And then one thing I love about Axel's room, it's small, but it's perfect for him for now is that you can see orange trees outside. It's super cool. Say good morning, world. Good morning, world. <laughs> Can you see it? We're gonna make the green pancakes? Yeah. Okay. I'll just try them. Huh? I'll just try. You wanna try? Okay. Okay, Axel, you wanna help me? Yeah. So, I usually make these like healthy, healthy pancakes. Okay. I use oats. I, I will make pumpkin. Cake. Baking with, soda. With this, with this. Baking powder. With this. A little spinach for color. And a little vanilla extract for taste. Uh, banana and one egg. So it's super easy. 
Axel loves to be in a kitchen. He, he always helps me out with baking and... Axel, your mommy's a little helper? Yeah. Do you want to put this in? Yeah. Thank you. Let me put this one in. <laughs> that face. <laughs> good <Yeah>. job. <laughs> okay, good job. Okay. <clears throat> Let's put a little bit more of oats. So does this tool, I could not be a mom, I don't think. Like this is, <clears throat> you need it for everything, you know? Blend his food, blend his uh, pancakes, blend the smoothies, everything. Um, it's my biggest helper in the kitchen. I think I went through three of them already because I use it so much. I have a plus blend, put it away. Daddy's back. Morning. Mommy. Hey, okay. Mommy, come. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Good morning. It's so weird when I drop him off at the school. He's all fine. He's all good. Happy. He's like, bye. And then when I pick him up, he's like going crazy, screaming, crying. I almost feel like he's bottling up his emotions for four hours while he's in school and then he sees me and everything just like comes out. Right, Axel? Do you like school? <laughs> no. You know how some days you have like perfect pancake days and some days <laughs> it's a complete disaster? It's a complete disaster today. <laughs> Look at this. Last four ones came out kind of good, but this is Axel's breakfast usually. We give him little pancakes. Actually, I'm gonna make it all nice so you can see it on the floor. Oh. Axel, you're gonna have quick pancakes and then we have to get ready for your school. This I made yesterday. It's basically steamed blend uh, strawberries with apple. So I call it jam for Axel, but I don't give him actual jam, but it's just blend berries. And he likes it with pancakes or with waffles. Axel, do you like your hair? I never thought my son would have a curly hair like this. It's pretty wild. Do you want orange juice, Axel? Yeah. So you usually get oranges from our garden and just make fresh orange juice for Axel. Fresh orange juice for Axel. Fresh from a garden. Cheers. Mine? Yeah, or orange juice. Got some orange juice? Yeah. What's this? Uh, you gonna dip your pancake in? Yeah. Where's Axel? Where's Axel? Hello? Hello? Ah. This is quick. Uh, lunch for Axel that I prepared because you have to drop him off at school. Uh, here we have some yogurt, apples, strawberries, blueberries, egg, cucumber, and this is a little pasta with chicken. And now we're just gonna get Axel dressed. I'm gonna get dressed and we're gonna head to Axel's school and drop him off. Tell them we're ready for school. We're ready for school. Ready? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Yeah, yeah. Axel has a photo day today at school where they take photos. It's gonna be so cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Axel's school is very like outdoorsy and they have a lot of animals actually on the property. They have like a little uh, barn and they have as well like a lizard house where they have a snake in there. I didn't go to see it because I'm super scared of snakes, but they're like spiders and all these like insects and they all go and study about them. Like, of course, when Axel's older, but they already start at this age. They just go and like feed the bunnies and it's kind of cool. I wish I had that growing up. I grew up in a small town, small city called Eiskrokla in Latvia very green we have a beautiful river so we would swim a lot like in summertime it always be by the water 
and uh, but it was pretty mellow, you know, pretty mellow, nothing too exciting, and I wouldn't say too boring either, like it was just really nice, and I had a great childhood, the all summers I spent at my grandmother's house, that's like a few miles away from my mom's house, and she had this like field where we should like plant like potatoes, so harvest like a lot of different things like berries we would go to like farmers market with my grandfather and like sell the berries and I would make some money it was really cute you know it taught me a lot so I kind of I basically really my childhood tracks those eyes right now <laughs> it's just really cool to experience all these things and see like how amazed he is by like pulling out the tomato you know and like eating it fresh from my mom's greenhouse like it's really cool so I'm glad to give him that insight. Here we are. Can you say bye? Bye. Knuckles. <laughs> we just got to my storage. Um, let's go check it out. What kind of skeletons do I have in my closet? <laughs> let's go. Welcome to this orange story. <laughs> Woo! Look at this. This is my little side project in between modeling days when I would like travel. I would go home and it would take me a long time to make this, like a very long time. Uh, because I was on the road like three, four times a week and non-stop going somewhere. So going home and doing a little art was like my a little common piece, my zone. I used to be in art school, so that's just like a, a little thing about me. Oh my gosh, he's like old. These are from my Lasenza days. I call Lasenza my like my second family and they, they gave this for my birthday. So it's crazy, maybe a little backstory about how I got Lasenza underwear contract. And I worked with them for 10 years, which was an amazing run. They became like my family in New York, pretty much, because we would shoot nonstop, like almost every month. We had shoots and uh, I would go jo join them for conferences in Ohio. And like, we became so close with all the people involved in it that it was really sad when it ended, to be honest. Like it was really heartbreaking um, because there are so many different changes. Company got sold and it all like, uh, went different direction but the time we spent together it was just incredible and it was wild how i got the job so photographer who shot it greg cadell i used to shoot with him quite a bit at the beginning of my career and then we kind of like drifted apart like i was working with different other people and like he was shooting with other different models and like i remember one day going to agency and being like hey I haven't seen Greg Cadell in so long. Could I maybe have a chance, have a casting and go see him again, you know? And agency was like, you know what? I think it's a good good idea. Let's let's do it. Let's set it up. And I remember go see, I went to like, I think it was like Pier 59 in New York or something. And I see Greg there and he's like, Kinta, oh my God, have you been long time? And we just like hit it off again. And he was like, actually, I'm working with this brand called Asanza and they're looking for a girl right now. Um, why won't you come in and like we're gonna do some pictures and like let's see how it goes and so they booked me for this job and um, I got it I was that rock and roll rock and roll chic girl that was like that was like a whole idea about this brand identity it was like this rock and roll girl who likes to have fun who's like uh, sweet at the same time but can be naughty and like all these things in one and um, yeah based on their you know feedback I fit the profile very well and I got the job and um, I don't remember if it was right away or a couple of years in uh, they offered me contract and that was a big deal big big deal I think my life would have been so different if I didn't have that and just the perspective for you guys like you become so close with the people behind the scenes like all you see is Lasenza and me and underwear that's like that's one me but then it's another whole level of warmth and family and um and then it was Los Angeles people you know they really like uh comforted me in my actually in my toughest times in new york they would always be there for me and um yeah just forever grateful so oh! okay let's see 
Oh, this is really cool. Still has Coca-Cola in there. That's such a cool story. I did the shoot for Marc Jacobs Diet Coke. Basically, this was 30 year anniversary for Diet Coke. And uh, I was the face of it. Every decade is different girl, like different style. And we had such a fun shoot with Marc Jacobs together. So it wasn't just for Diet Coke, but with Marc Jacobs and me. Little girl from Latvia shooting with Marc Jacobs. It was incredible. I always looked up to Marc Jacobs and he was uh, one of designers I work the most, I would say. I would always do looks, hair, makeup for the shows and like do all the shows. Um, and not just for Marc Jacobs, but for Louis Vuitton because he used to uh, design Louis Vuitton at that time too. And so this was like a cool little project we did together. Actually, this is, I would say this is one of my favorite stories. It's with Jason Kubler, Tony Irvine, Anthony doing hair, makeup, Benjamin Paquet for um, Vogue, Spanish Vogue, February 2013. Oh my God, this was during Sandy in New York. Whoever remembers that crazy. Such a cool story. So beautiful. I think that's what I love about fashion is that like you become, you become such a like character and different person than who you are. Like genuinely, I think I'm very shy and very quiet person. And through modeling, uh, through pictures, you can express and be anyone else. And when I get that hair and makeup done, I just don't feel like myself at all. Like you become something else. And that's why I think it helps me, gets that different energy out of me. And I really enjoy. This is Frontal Nars. Uh, I think it was for Style by Patty Wilson, Makeup by Elena Cairo. This was for, I can't remember, Numero or Vogue or something. But I always loved shooting with Francois because he's such a legend in makeup world. Wow, this is so cool. Did the shoot with Willie, stylist Oliver. Oliver, stylist, he was styling Prada that time too. People would love to dress me into Marilyn Monroe. This is really a fun, fun shoot. So sometimes clients would ask you, you know, like if, if the reference is Marilyn Monroe, like, could you please like watch videos? Now looking at these pictures, I'm like, I have this such an overwhelming feeling of, wow, this is actually a lot of work. Like when you do the job, you just like do it. And you're like onto the next one, onto the plane, onto the job, like from one thing to the next. Fashion Allure, Little Beauty. This was with Francois on ours. W. I'm a diva. Look at this one. Ooh, la, la. This right here, it was so insane. Like I didn't even tell anyone I got this job. I was flying from New York to Paris to do a different job. And my agency was like, oh, can you go see this? Um, can you go see why sell people? Because they're looking for a face for their cosmetics. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like from the airport. I didn't have like time to go to hotel and change. I was just like straight to the casting. And sometimes when I'm extra tired, I have this second wind where I have like this crazy energy and I can be like super silly. I went to the hotel and I got a call that I got the job. And I was like, I couldn't even believe it, how fast it happened. I didn't tell anyone, didn't tell my mom, didn't tell anyone. I cannot even believe it's real. And when it came out, then everyone saw it and everyone's like, why didn't you tell us? And I'm like, because I couldn't believe in myself that it's actually gonna come out, you know? And this completely changed my life. This is the moment where people start recognizing me on the streets. I mean, it was wild. I'm very proud of this one, I have to say. <laughs> There's another beauty, beauty for Nars. I have such a cool shot. There's actually a video for this campaign as well. It's pretty incredible. We were shooting in London with Martin Marcus. Madonna was directing the video and uh, she came out of nowhere really. Like it was very late in the evening. We've been shooting all day and she came on. She was like, hi girls, what's your names? We told them the names and she, she got my name right away. She's like, Ginta, you do this. Siri, you do this. Like every girl, like she's so smart and sharp. And uh, yeah, she was directing all the steps. So like, if you wanna check out Miu Miu uh, campaign. It was definitely an experience. We're shooting for a couple of days and uh, it was definitely a surprise when we saw Madonna walking in and being like, hi girls, I'm gonna direct your video. Well, this was a little glimpse into my past, my skeletons in my closet. I hope you enjoyed it and let's go back to my house.
Welcome to my backyard. Uh, here I'm going to be answering your Q&A's that you sent me on Instagram. And then we're going to be heading to Spring Place. We're going to have interview there and uh, we'll close out the day. So let's, let's do this. Did you ever felt less with the others? beauty it's probably meaning like work stuff when i was working with other models and stuff did i ever felt less i wouldn't say so i would definitely compare myself to others body wise i'd be like oh she's skinnier than me oh she's gonna get this job she's like awesome she's much better than me but not beauty wise it was more like you compare your body because it's such a like industry where you get judged by your looks so much how skinny you are so i would say yeah that was definitely something I would compare myself, you know, but who doesn't? I feel like especially at that age when you 18, 16, like you tend to compare yourself with others. First big show you walked and how was everything around that day? My first big show that I walked was Prince Schuller in New York. I got the show, it was exclusive. So that automatically opened me doors to do shows in Europe because in New York I could only do Prenza. So it was very special. Like I was doing their looks and, and hair makeup and I did the show i think i was just so very nervous very nerve-wracking i walked some shows before but that caliber was my first one and i think i was just like very nervous and especially seeing bigger girls like oh my god i'm doing this show with these huge girls do i remember how everything looked around not really i mean when you walk on a catwalk you don't really see much all you see is light at the end of the runway and you kind of focus on that and uh and yeah, you do your job. I'm sure all the buzz in the backstage was amazing, but it's like when you start doing all the shows, then it just like kind of becomes the same, you know? You get used to it. But that first, for sure, like incredible feeling. Why do models walk so serious on the runway? And I think it's such a silly question because imagine if all the models would walk down the runway and was like, like, why? Like, you are there to show your clothes, you you do the walk, normal. Like, you don't have to be extra angry or, like, smiley. Like, sometimes designer would be like, can you smile with your eyes, you know? Can you, can you be more sexy? Can you be more this? Like, they give you direction, but, like, you don't have to express your... Uh, do crazy facial expressions when you show the clothes you know I think it's kind of common sense so a lot of people I don't know why they always think like models need to smile on the runway there are designers who likes that like the girls actually smile like Anna Sui and Stella McCartney so every designer is different but that medium ground is just be normal which model do you adore your favorite in the industry and why I mean I always loved Kate Moss just because she stands out in my opinion like she has that like grunge style to her you know she's not like overly sweet and like she has this a little bit bitchy look to her I really like that yeah so I just think like she's done so many amazing things that I kind of like hold her in high regard in that sense so for shiny skin what's the best things to use well first of all, I think it all depends what you eat you have to eat lots of healthy fats like avocado salmon like fish amino acids like you know all the like leafy green spinach like it all comes from inside and then of course what you put on skin i use jojoba oil it's my favorite because it's the the texture is like the most similar to skin base and uh it's it's just super healthy way to uh, moisturize your skin with, with lots of healthy benefits so yeah i don't really use crazy like lotions and things like that and then for face masks lately i'm very much into k-beauty so korean masks most unpleasant thing about being a model definitely being cold because a lot of times summer collection gets shot in the winter and vice versa so when you shoot summer collection in winter it's usually very cold and you're wearing like bikini or like small little dresses and i think that's like it's always been my hardest one to be overly cold because I feel like I can't express myself and I can't give my 100% self for the picture and for the client when I'm uncomfortable. And people be like, yeah, but you have to like, you know, you have to put yourself together and like power it through. Yeah, you do it. But I'm just saying inside of myself, I'm like, ah, oh, this sucks because I can't give myself 100 for this job shooting winter clothes in summer i'm fine with because i love heat so i'm like give me that coat like it's blazing sun i'm like i'm fine i can do that what would be your advice for an aspiring model just be you um and just follow your path and do you and uh, 
I think our days you have so many opportunities it's like so much more digital this world that you can create your own world on Instagram and represent yourself and be that model it can be a role model you know like it's just like our days the doors are much more open I feel like when I started modeling uh, we didn't have Instagram there was no such thing as like even GPS maps like there's no you know digital world at all so in a sense I feel like it's easier but at the same time harder because it's a lot more competition you know what I mean just be you and like really if that's something you like you have to really love this job to do it so just go for it what was your reaction when you found out that you're gonna be opening Versace in 2011 oh my god like freaking out <laughs> this is again I like when I find out like some amazing good news I keep them to myself until it actually comes true so I remember walking out from that fitting knowing that I'm gonna be opening Versace I walked outside and I was with well, my agent was there and he was like how did it go and I was like it went great and he's like so which number are you and I'm like I'm not sure so I was just like kind of keeping to myself and he's like really you don't know which number I'm like no because they're still changing whatever and I couldn't sleep that night I just couldn't believe that moment it's like dream come true I want to know how to keep your relationship with your partner in long distance listen like I think it all comes down to timing in life right like you and your partner you need to be on the same page and you have to be willing no matter what in life like if you're willing if you put your effort into something you're gonna be able to do it so it all comes down to that but like if you sense it's not working or like you're like pushing it too hard then it's not worth it you know it's very simple i think it's very kind of black and white what are your favorite things about modeling for sure traveling and meeting amazing people becoming close with so many incredible models my girlfriends around the world like i think it's just so beautiful and now so seeing them with like babies and like moving back to their hometowns or like moving somewhere else with their partners and like building their family i feel like now we all enter a new stage in our lives and uh, uh thank god for instagram like we see what's up and we always chat and talk to each other so i think that's that's really beautiful i really like your podcast would you go into modeling if you were starting out today first of all thank you so much and um, it's a very good question if i would get into modeling if i would start right now probably i would i think so definitely modeling is something i was meant to be at the right time it's my passion i love doing what i love and modeling it is you know i think it's such a big question if i would go back into modeling nowadays yeah but i think i would yeah why not fashion show you never did but wish you have yeah it's actually two shows i never did i feel like i've done it all except gucci and jiwanshi jiwanshi was because i wasn't edgy enough at that time they're like saying i was like too sweet looking we often hear disturbing stories about the industry and bad experiences in your career there's few definitely few but wait like all good experience outweighs the bad for sure hands down but there's definitely a couple couple bad experiences that me and marina we actually gonna do episode on that one uh, where we talk about all the dark side of the fashion industry so stay tuned what was the peak moment in your career when you realized you made it into industry for sure the show like pranza schuler and then like next thing was uh ysl fashion show because once i did pranza schuler in new york i went to europe i did like miu miu dolce gabbana and then it's like the ball started rolling and i did more and more and more shows and uh in the meantime yeah i did advertising and uh shoots and like ysl was one of the first ones that i did i was like oh my god this is it like this is me personally my dream come true so yeah that was the beginning would you ever let your children start modeling at such a young age at 15 16 yeah i think so why not how often do you visit latvia and do you miss your home countries i visit latvia lately like once a year because i had access so it's like really hard to travel and you know travel with a baby it's insane so hopefully i'll start going more there because i miss it so much i love it how do you feel when designer makes you wear weird clothes or weird makeup uh you just do it you know it's work it's job you just accept it and you're like well there must be a vision why it's like that of course there's been some weird test shoots where would I, would, which ones i did before like my career started and like they would like tape some weird stuff on my face and i'll be like I'll n my agency will never use these pictures but fine and of course they never did use the picture so it's like there have been 
some moments like that but overall like even if you feel weird in the moment with the light and with the photographer like how they put the picture together at the end you always look in the magazine you're like oh this makes sense like this really goes with the story so i never really had big complaints you know some girls like always did like fix their eyebrows and they didn't like this that I'm, i was never that picky i was like i was like yeah this is art I, I, i'll roll with it you know so yeah this was a quick q a hopefully i showed you a little bit more of my world my inside of my fashion career and a little bit of my home life and now i'm gonna have to change and we're going to spring place to film episode of the extra stitch